Today we're going to talk a little bit about the DB2 error log. This is one of the things that are the most intimidating to a newer person, but it's one of the first things you need to learn. This is where DB2 is going to write about problems it ran into or possible warnings. You'll use it from anywhere on database creation to when the database is performing weird. It's not hard to understand. It's not a complex entity. You just need to know where it is, what's in it, and how to parse it effectively. So let's talk about where it is. The first thing that you're going to check out is the database manager config, the DBM CFG. This is going to contain two pieces of critical information. The first is going to be the Diag level. This is how chatty is the error log going to be. And the next is the Diag path. This is where the DB2 Diag.log will actually be held. Now, what you see here is not default. I have my Diag path going to DB2 Diag. It's a file system I created. The reason I did that is because default is in the instance home directory under SQL Lib DB2 dump. The concern I have there is if I get an error log that is spiraling out of control, it can fill up the file system and actually cause problems for DB2. So I always move it first thing when I create a database. The Diag level will control exactly how chatty it is going to be as it writes. And the default is three. My personal preference is three. I've found that I can lower it down to one and get only severe and critical errors and the most important stuff, but sometimes I miss messages that show me something's coming. Whereas the four gives me so much information, it's hard to parse. So this is personal preference, but I think you'll find most DBAs are leaving it at three. So what's in the actual log? Well, the DB2 Diag log looks like it's broken up into paragraphs based off of timestamp. And there's a lot of information in here. The first being the severity of the actual error. Is it a warning? Is it severe? Is it something that it worked itself past? And although I don't have it highlighted here, right under the error level is PROC. And that often tells you what it was trying to do at the time or gives you a hint on what DB2 was running when it caught the problem. In this case, we know it had something to do with a password. Now over on the left, it's going to give you a PID. That 641 is going to link to an application ID that's in list applications. So if it still exists, you can go out there and force that person or thing off. It'll tell you the instance that is having the problem. And of course, it gives you a message. Now this message is a crapshoot. It can be very useful and verbose, or it could be absolutely cryptic and you get nothing out of it. But I'll show you how to mine some of that data out to get you to a better clue. Here, we can tell it's a bad user. So between the proc and the bad user, we could probably guess somebody logged in with an improper ID or password. But we can play that through. Notice that ZRC code over there, the hexadecimal number. Well, we can do something cool with that. The ZRC code is actually made for IBM support, although we have access to it. And once you look up the hexadecimal number, it's going to give you the SQL error code and it's going to give you a bunch of information from what it actually means to the most common causes for this problem and some things to check. And to get that information from the command line, you can type db2diag-rc. When you do that and plug in the hexadecimal number, it's going to pull up a nice page of information for you to help look up the actual problem. Now, something that's more common is the SQL code. That SQL code will often be in the DB2 Diag log message. And this is also something that can be passed to you from another teammate. For example, if you have an application system administrator, sometimes they'll come to you and say, hey, our error log is going crazy. We think something's up with the database. And many times, whatever they show you is gobbledygook. It doesn't mean anything to me as a DBA. But if I see SQL code, I know that it's database related. That's the first clue. And often it'll be SQL code and RC code, which will give you a little bit more information of not only is it the SQL error, but 
it's one of these five possibilities. Now, if I have that SQL code, I can pull up a more useful number that I can look up on Google. See in the middle there on the right, it says SQL 0911N. That's a normal standard format for an error code. So if you have the SQL code, you can change it into that format by putting SQL and N or W, usually N, around it. If it's a three digit number, you're gonna pad it with a zero. If it's four digits, put it in as it normally is. That is something you can actually go Google and pull up information like you would get from the ZRC code. However, you can also sit there from the command line and just type db2 space question mark space in that error code that you just generated. That will pull you up a very easy to read page just like the ZRC code on what possibly happened and what you can do next. It's a personal preference. I find I lean more on the SQL code than the ZRC code, but both are very useful. And if the SQL code doesn't give me enough information, I'll lean on the ZRC code because that actually can go pretty in depth. So that's it, not too complicated. Let's go out to the command line and I can take you on a little tour and we can see a real life example. Well, we're on the server. Let's figure out where the error log is. Remember what I mentioned before, the error log directory and its diag level are gonna be set at the database manager config. So it's db2 get dbm cfg and I'm gonna grep out for anything that says Diag. And the first two are the pieces of information we were looking for. We can see the error capture level is set to three, which is where it should. And the Diag path is showing us the file system, the error log is being held. Now, this is the default. And as I mentioned before, if this was my server, I would end up changing this to another directory so it doesn't interfere with anything if the error log gets out of control and fills up a file system. But this is just for an example, so I'm not worried right now. Now there are a couple, couple different things in this directory and I'm not going to point them all out, but there are two that I'm going to point out to you and the first is the db2 diag log. This is the actual error log. The NFY log is something you will see referenced every once in a while. To me, this is Diag Lite. And there's not enough information in here. It's meant to give more administrative information and to cut through a lot more of the noise, but I find that it doesn't really have what I want. I can get what I need by playing with the proper levels uh, for the Diag log. So what's the best way to parse this? To be honest, I still often go to a VI in a search. And you can do other different things. You can tail it. You can look at the last 300 lines. I end up going in and doing a VI and going to the time frame. I know there is a problem. I'm gonna show you something in here real quick so you get a feel of what the error log looks like. But then I'm gonna show you a shortcut. So if I wanted to look at the Diag log, I can easily get lost in here. So one of the first things I would do is I would end up trying to get close to the date I was looking for. And here I am on the 16th, which is today. But if I start scrolling up and down, I'm going to find there's nothing here of use. Well, I know part of the information that I received from the application team is this said bad user or something like that. So what if I just did a look for the word bad? Here we go, bad user. This is the error that I was showing you in the presentation previously. Now, whenever I look for an error, the first thing I do is I check up and down. Was something leading up to it? And is there more information afterwards? Leading up to it, there really wasn't much going on. Matter of fact, we just activated the database. But if I go beyond it, I can see, hey, password validation issue. So between the two of these, I know I had a password problem. and it could tell me how severe it was or was it a warning. In this case, it's labeling it severe because somebody flat out got denied coming in. And it's going to flag it higher than I would, but at least it gives you something to search on. So what about the faster way, the, the better way of doing this? Well, let me get out of it. And I have to admit, 
I have not used this until very recently and I think it's pretty cool. The thing that I wanted to show you is a function called the git diag hist and it basically allows you to query a table and gather what information you need for what time frames and just narrow things down very very quickly. Now the SQL I have generated is fairly long. Matter of fact, I'm over here copying it off a notepad right now. I'll show you it here. We'll run it so we can see the output. And then I wouldn't get too concerned about writing this down because it's going to be part of a script that I will put in my GitHub repository for Discover DB2. You can go out there and pull it down at your leisure and either use it as it is or manipulate it as you see fit. But I want to point out the main part, the gut of this SQL. And here it is, from table PD get diag hist. And you're going to see a bunch of flags. You're going to end up going to Knowledge Center to see what all these variables are. But it's basically saying around what time frame, what type of errors do you want to see, where do you want to get the information from. And up here, I'm grabbing the details I want, the timestamp, the impact, what was affected, what was the message. So let's see what's returned. Let's go up to the very, very top. It's easier to see. Now, this is pretty much everything that just scrolled through the DB2 Diag log. There are a couple things I like. The timestamp, of course, the level. You have W for warning, E for error, S for severe. I've never seen this before. This is very recent. It's the impact and it's from the user point of view. So you remember those package cache messages that we see every once in a while? You probably saw it go through the diag as I was looking around. I was immediately gravitating to it because it was a large and verbose message. But did it really impact the user? No, it says unlikely. Now down here, it can say, hey, it potentially messed up the user. And then there are some here that says it definitely messed up the user. And notice sometimes it gives me a database name and sometimes it doesn't. And that's because it's reporting everything from not only the database level, but from the DB2 environment level. For example, the database manager turning DB on, DB2 on happened here. Well, it's not at a database level, so there's no specific information. The Apple ID is basically what came in and connected. Now, I was local here, but if you had an application coming through, you would see their IP address here. We also have the authorization ID that'll tell you who came in and was executing this stuff like DB2 inst1. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom, sure enough, here's the error we were looking for previously. And it never even really got to the database. That's why there's nothing here. We know it was a bad ID and password, so it was at the environment level and it was labeled as severe. The reason it was labeled severe is because the user was immediately impacted. And that's the point of view that it's taking. Now, look at this ZRC code. Do you remember that information I was telling you about? Let's take a look and see what it means. So if I do DB2 Diag dash RC and I put in the ZRC code it's going to give me some more information. Sometimes it's basically what you had before. Sometimes it can go into a lot of detail. And in here, it gives you something that we didn't have before. Remember, the actual error message, all it said was bad user. It wasn't until we scrolled further on in the error log did we see that it was a password issue. But here, it gave you more information. Here's the bad user. Here is what happened. And here's an actual SQL code. That's something I could go Google. And here is the format you would see if it was coming in from the application. So if your application system admin came to you and said, hey, I've got a bunch of gobbledygook, but I saw the word SQL code in here. Is this you? You could actually turn this around using that formatting I told you to come up with something that you could specifically look at. Now, 
to get more information just like you were googling you would type this command now here's the thing that cracks me up for some reason on the dockerized version of DB2 I have here this feature is disabled I am not able to do this on this platform but I have verified it works I use it all the time As a matter of fact I just flipped over to a server at work to make sure it does work this will actually pull up a manual page that tells you a lot about what was going on why it happened what you can do to rectify it and next steps so that pretty much covers it we've taken a look at where the error log is how much information is being held in there and how to throttle it we took a look at an example error log then we found a better way of querying the error log and we've talked a little bit about looking at error codes and how to get more information about them. 